Hey guys, what's going on? Dylan DeJesus here, and today we have a very special project to share with you guys. Recently, over the past couple weeks, we have been working very hard behind the scenes cooking up a bunch of custom shoes for eBay's 25th anniversary. 25 years already, hard to believe. Uh, just a, a quick little memory that I can share with eBay is before I even got into customizing shoes, I'm just somebody who absolutely loved collecting shoes, and eBay is where I would buy and sell a bunch of shoes, and eBay is also the first place that I actually sold the very first pair of shoes that I ever painted. So really cool to how sometimes in life everything kind of comes full circle and we're able to be a part of uh, sneaker history and help eBay celebrate 25 years. So we cooked up five pairs of custom shoes that uh, match different themes in streetwear and fashion over the past 25 years along with some really, really signature sneaker models that were huge pieces of the past 25 years. So be sure to check all of those out. You have the chance to bid on those. We're gonna have all of that linked in the description. A little bit later in the video, I'm gonna go ahead and pass it over to Jason and we're gonna walk you through how to do some really simple product photography, showing you, of course, as always, how you can do it with as little equipment as possible, how you can do it with just your smartphone, and it's a lot less complicated than you probably think. But before that, we're gonna go ahead and take you through a little bit of a behind the scenes on the making of one of our pairs of Camel Yeezys that we cooked up for the 25th anniversary collab. So let's go ahead and dive right into that. I hope you guys enjoyed that Yeezy B-roll sequence. I'm gonna go ahead and take over for a second to demonstrate how easy it is to get some clean, inexpensive product photography. This style of photography works best if you plan on selling your customs on eBay or even perhaps your own website. These photos may not work on Instagram unless you're adding your own style or flair to it. A common misconception that most people have is that you need a lot of expensive equipment to capture a great photo, but all I'm using is a simple, inexpensive bundle that includes the stands and a white backdrop that you could find on eBay. And for my light setup, I just have these three Medusa style headlamps that I have pretty close to the shoe because you want to make sure to get that paper as white as possible before it's, you even take it into post. And when it comes to taking the photo itself, you can see that I'm not using any special apps. I'm not tweaking any settings on my phone. I just went ahead and opened up the camera app and now I just snapped the photo and that's ready to be taken into Lightroom to edit. Before we go into the actual editing process, I want to start off by saying that there are a million different ways on how to actually accomplish what you're looking to accomplish in these programs. The, the things that I'm doing are just methods that I've grown accustomed to doing. Like in Photoshop, for example, I know you're supposed to use layers and clipping masks and all that, but I honestly work on only one layer, which could become very hectic sometimes, but these are just like the way, these are just the ways that I get through my editing process. When a client looks at a photo online or on their phone, they should expect to see the same product when it actually arrives to them. So you wanna keep the edits to very minor, minor tweaks. So you can see that the photo here taken on the phone is very, it's a very cool blue photo, which is fine because of the paper, but we're not really necessarily worried about the, the background as much as we are about the shoe. Because like, as you can see here, the gold is more, it's more of a yellow orange and on the screen it's more of like, it's more of a blue. And we're going to go ahead and warm that up a little bit to fix that part. Again, a lot of these settings that I'm really messing around with, are, they're just like, I'm just feeling it out, seeing what I like. If I go down or up a little bit, these settings aren't settings that you should really rely on for your product photos. I would um, go ahead and just slightly change things until you, until you think it looks good. I know a lot of people tend to just like spike the clarity all the way up, but for pro and again, for pro photography, you really do not want to do that. I bump it up just maybe up to five and that's about even five is a little pushing it. Maybe I'll do like two or three 
just to kind of exaggerate some of the some of the textures but you don't want to like over over detail things if that makes sense and then since our colors are a little flat i would also bump up the saturation just a little bit not too much and then if we go ahead and show you the before and after you could see that there's already a huge difference and i'm pretty happy with that so we're going to go ahead and export that and move that into photoshop okay now that you have your file in photoshop again there are so many different ways on how to do this properly i was never taught how to use photoshop properly i kind of taught myself so my methods might not work for you but I just want to show you guys like how easy it is to actually get the photo that you're looking for. So what we need to do first is select the shoes and the shadows underneath. So for that, I'm going to go ahead and use my quick selection tool right here on the left. We're going to go ahead and just start selecting the shoe. And you can see right here in the bottom, the quick selection tool actually already captured some of the shadow right here. And that's fine because we're going to end up needing that. So don't worry if um, your tool is selecting more than it needs to select. Okay, now that we have the shoe selected, we also need to go ahead and select the shadows underneath the shoe to kind of give it a more like realistic feel because without the shadows, it would just be floating and that doesn't really look that great when it comes to private photography. So we're going to go ahead and just grab these shadows over here too. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit shift or command shift I to inverse the selection. And now everything around that selection is the selected part or the selected area now so i'm going to go ahead and hit delete oh i'm going to rasterize this first all right go ahead and hit delete and you should have this white background since the shadow is obviously a very different shade of white now what we have to do is lighten up the shadow underneath the shoe so what we're going to do is grab now grab that area be careful not to select any of the shoe because we're not trying to change the brightness of the shoe at all it's just the brightness of the shadow if you do end up selecting some of the shoe just hold option to deselect okay that looks pretty good now we're gonna go ahead and brighten that up and go to image adjustments brightness and contrast and then just up the brightness until you feel that it the shadows kind of blend into the paper i'm pretty happy with around that so as you can see, we still have this harsh line around the shadow, but we're gonna do, we're just gonna go ahead and clean that up really quickly with this tool called the healing brush tool. Select the spot on your canvas and start brushing that away. And you can see those harsh lines start to disappear. And just do that all around until you don't have that anymore. All right, and now one of the last steps that I'll take is take the blur tool. It looks like a teardrop right here on the side and you can just finish blurring out the shadows kind of give it a more of a realistic feel and then after that go ahead and make your canvas a little bit bigger and get more focus on the shoes and that's it that's all that's that's all the steps i take to get to get this clean like private photography look for specifically for ebay photos or any 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 other website photos work as well and you can see we started off with this and now we have this this looks a lot cleaner. You don't need expensive strobes and expensive camera. I did it all on my smartphone with some continuous lights that can be found on eBay, possibly in a bundle. I hope this helps you guys with your future private photography endeavors. This was my once a year YouTube appearance. I'm gonna go ahead and hand it back to Dylan. So there you have it guys. Hopefully we were able to show you that product photography doesn't need to be that overwhelming. I think that it's probably a little scarier in thought than it actually is in application. Once you actually just get things set up and and we tried to show that you can do it with uh, just some simple items that you probably already have. Some lights, your smartphone can take great photos, and then just a little bit of photo editing and you're able to achieve some really clean stuff. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Make sure to check out that link in the description and check out all of the pairs that we cooked up along with all of the other talented customizers who partook in this. And like I said, guys, I can't emphasize enough how cool it is to be a part of sneaker history and be chosen to uh, partake in this. So thank you guys. For your continued support, this wouldn't be possible without you guys and your continued support here on YouTube. So thank you guys as always. We truly appreciate it. And we'll see you guys in that next video.